because the Diels-Alder reaction or the 4 plus 2 cycloaddition is pericyclic, the reaction is stereospecific with respect to the dienophile. If the dienophile starts out cis, it ends up cis. And if it starts out trans, it ends up trans. But if the diene include substituents as well, there's a whole other stereochemical issue that comes up. And that's the topic of this video. We're going to really dig into Diels-Alder stereochemistry and understand the stereochemical outcome of the reaction in the fullness of its complexity by the end of this video. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a mnemonic for predicting Diels-Alder stereochemistry that takes advantage of an empirical rule developed by one of the reaction's discoverers, Alder, known as the Alder-Endo rule. Okay, so to set this up, I want to consider a reaction between cyclopentadiene, which is our diene right here, and this dienophile with two cis aldehyde groups. Because those aldehyde groups are cis in the dienophile, they end up cis in the cyclohexene product. And we see that here. Two CHO groups on the same side of the newly formed sigma bonds in the newly formed six-membered ring, which is right here. But notice, there are two ways to put those aldehyde groups cis to each other. They can be pointed down, like so, or we can switch each of those with the two H's and still leave them in a cis orientation, but now on the other side of the cyclohexene, right? Now they're cis, but both above the newly formed cyclohexene ring. And so we still conserved the configuration of the dienophile. They're cis in both cases, but these two structures are very clearly not the same. For reasons that will become clear shortly, we're going to call them endo, in this left-hand case, with the CHOs down, and on the same side, or sin, to the alkene bridge right here, sin to the alkene group, and exo, when these groups are anti to the alkene bridge, or sin to the alkyl, the CH2 bridge, as we call it. Now, the endo and exo structures are diastereomers. They are not mirror images. They have a difference in a cis-trans relationship is one way to think about this, right? These aldehydes are trans to the CH2 in the structure on the left and cis to the CH2 in the structure on the right. They're diastereomers of one another. And so we should expect that one will be favored over the other since these diastereomers are going to have different energies and be formed at different rates. And in order to see how these come about, I want to show you the transition states that lead to each of these, and we're going to look at the products in three dimensions to get a better handle on the endo and exo isomers. So first, let's consider the endo case. The endo transition state and endo product are called as such because the aldehyde groups are approaching underneath the diene. So the way to visualize this is imagine the diene is a little bit closer to you, and you're looking down on the plane of the diene system. The dialdehyde here, the dienophile, is further back away from you, but again, you're looking at the plane of the alkene, right? So the two reactants are approaching one another in parallel planes with the dienophile further back and the diene further up close. This is called the endotransition state because these substituents, the aldehyde groups, are pointed underneath the diene, right? As bond formation occurs, those groups will move underneath and point towards the diene. So they're in an endo orientation. Now let's look at this from a Newman projection perspective, where we're actually looking down these newly forming bonds, which are these purple dotted lines. We get a Newman projection where we're looking down two bonds at once, both of those purple dotted lines, and it looks like this. So the purple circles indicate where bonds are forming, the dienophile carbons forming those bonds are behind the diene, so we can't see them directly, but we know they're back there, right? Since here's the aldehyde substituent, here's an H substituent, and there's a carbon right in the middle there. Here's the double bond of the dienophile, which is disappearing, right, as bond formation occurs. And then we have the other carbon of the dienophile down here. And so what we can notice here, for instance, is these aldehyde groups are going to end up cis or sin to these carbons, which become part of this alkene bridge in the product, right? These carbons correspond to these carbons, and those end up 
sin or cis to the CHO groups in the endo product. And that's exactly what we're seeing. This group is sin to the double bond, and this group is sin to the double bond. That happens in the endo transition state. To generate the exo transition state, we use a very similar picture. We just flip over the dienophile. So the two reactants are still approaching one another in parallel planes. The dienophile is still in the back and the diene is still in the front. But now notice we've flipped over like pancake flipped the dienophile so that the aldehyde groups are now pointed out away from the diene, right? And these, this is known as the exo orientation. If we think about the Newman projection view of this, again, looking down those newly forming bonds, the purple dotted lines, we get a picture like this, very similar to the endo picture, but now notice that the CHO groups and the H's at each carbon have changed places. So now the CHO groups are in an exo orientation. And as you might imagine, now we see that the CHO groups and these carbons, which become part of the double bond in the cyclohexene in the product, these are now anti to each other. And we see that in the exo product. Notice now CHO, CHO are anti to the carbon-carbon double bond. And so we can infer these stereochemical relationships from analysis of the transition states. Just in case it's helpful, I wanted to highlight three-dimensional structures of the endo and exo products. So here on the left, we have the exo product with the two aldehyde groups, notice anti to the carbon-carbon double bond. On opposite sides, if you like, from the two newly formed sigma bonds. The newly formed sigma bonds are here and kind of in the back there. We have the aldehyde groups sort of pointed up and the carbon-carbon double bond pointed down, opposite sides of those newly formed sigma bonds. In the endo isomer, of course, the opposite is true. Now the aldehyde groups are down below those two newly formed sigma bonds, which are here and here. And the carbon-carbon double bond group is also below the newly formed sigma bonds. And so, as we would say, these are sin, the carbon-carbon double bond, the alkene, and the aldehyde groups are sin in the endo product and anti in the exo product. And again, all of this flows from spatial analysis of the transition state. So it's not worth memorizing these, this as a rule or anything like that. We're just looking for stereochemical relationships in the endo and exo products.